God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Frank Anfon White here, reminding you, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I want you to know that we have the promise of divine protection. I greet you in the magnificent name of our God who loves us so much and gave us his son, Jesus Christ, who is leading us and guiding us into new areas, new opportunities in the midst of this trying time that our nation and our world indeed find itself in. For the last 27 years, God has allowed us to have a prayer conference where it's really more than a conference, it's a movement. There is a certain motif and sound to prayer. Men and women from all around this region and around the country would converge on Long Island to seek God's face, lay before God, cry out to God, hear his word, hear his instructions. And because of the climate in which we find ourselves in, we must obey the political governmental parameters by which we will operate. Therefore, we're going to reschedule our prayer conference for another time. We will let you know. I am most grateful for my dear friends who have consented to come to be with us, Pastor John Hanna, Bishop Darrell Hines, and both of them were so gracious to want to come and be with us even in this moment. But we will all exercise the necessary precautionary, I should say extra precautionary measures at this time. And so stay tuned for further information concerning prayer conference for 2020. And for all updated information, feel free to visit the Zion Cathedral website, www.zioncathedral.org or www.fawministries.org for further information. I want you to know that God has a way of preparing his people. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And for the last several months, indeed, from last year, coming into 2020, we've been preaching and teaching the saints here at Zion and our jurisdiction how to prepare for what is about to come. And indeed, we are here. But I want you to know this out of the word of the Lord. In the book of Hosea, when he says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, um, though when you examine the context of that scripture, Hosea 4 and 6, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. It is speaking how uh, the children of Israel rejected God's standards for righteousness. They rejected God's standards for relationships and for their moral and ethical conduct. They were destroyed. But I think that scripture speaks well beyond spiritual knowledge. Um, but it raises a paradoxical question. Um, we don't know what we don't know. And if we don't know what we don't know, how do we avoid um, catastrophic or cataclysmic events? One thing we should do, I, I believe with all my heart, is we should always seek wisdom, seek knowledge seek counsel from the word of God and then develop an attitude that it's all right to not know everything. I have found myself in this conundrum, I'm sure like many of you, where we've all felt a sense of loss of control. But then as I began to seek the wisdom of God, seek the face of God concerning the season and that's what it is. It is a season that we're in at this moment. So many people are experiencing anxiety and post-traumatic um, stress disorder and pre-traumatic stress disorder. But let me help you with this right here. That feeling of a loss of control that you have, 
you have to admit um, there are many things you cannot control. You cannot control the weather. You cannot control the economy. You cannot control the political environment. And when you admit that you are not in control, but you know the one, I mean the one who is in control, God is in control. He is sovereign. That will bring you to a place of peace. I am in a place of peace knowing that my God is sovereign, that our God is in control. Let's use wisdom as the church and see this as an opportunity to deploy, hallelujah, men and women that will indeed be the salt of the earth and the light of the world in days and in weeks to come. I'm going to be sharing with you on a daily basis what the Lord has laid upon my heart to share with the church during this season. So I want you to stay tuned for updates on a daily basis. But know this, God is in control. He hasn't given us the spirit of fear. Because God is sovereign, let your emotions be at peace. Relax yourself. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And allow me to say a word to my fellow brothers and sisters who you may not be pastoring a mega church. We've heard a lot of information concerning 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 member churches. But in America, particularly under the Protestant umbrella, the majority of churches fall in a 75 member or less. So whatever state you may be in, please make sure that you abide by the civic uh, mandate. Don't break that mandate in the name of the Lord. If they say you can't gather no more than 50, obey that. And if your church membership is, is small, please know. This does not absolve you from taking responsibility to protect the constituency, the members of your local congregation. Space yourself properly. Don't have all of the members sitting next to each other. Let's practice uh, social distancing, distancing, I believe it's called now. Don't be on top of each other, limit, um, handshaking and kissing and by the words going forth it is our cultural expression to give somebody a high five and touch a neighbor all of those things would be irresponsible practices for us to continue in this season so even if you have a small church a small congregation you have a responsibility to protect your members. You do not want to be guilty of spreading and this disease and putting this virus, should I say, and putting people at harm's way. I believe you should really limit the amount of time that if you do have services, you should limit the amount and the length of those service times. Now, I'm not sure if this is the time to stay in church all day long, uh, three hours, three and a half hours. Let's show our members we care for them. I believe God can use you. The choir can sing. The preacher can preach. People can be blessed and go home within a 60-minute time frame. You may have to do that multiple times during the course of the day, depending on the size of your congregation. Sanitize your facility at the end of every setting. Make sure the doorknobs, and the handles and the pews and the benches are properly taken care of, all countertops. Your facility is the house of God. It should be kept in an excellent manner. It is the place where God comes to meet his people, hold it with high esteem and regard, particularly during these times. Again, you may be pastoring a smaller congregation, but man of God, woman of God, 
You are responsible to care for the sheep, to protect the sheep. And I charge you with that mandate to please hear God and be sensitive to the needs of your people. Please take what I'm saying in love. I love each of you. I'm praying for you. I'm believing and I know that God is going to bring us through this. I want you to stay tuned on a daily basis because there's some things God has shared with me and revealed to me about this time and what the church must do. In fact, at the close of 2019, I gave out red prayer cloths by the thousands to the membership of Zion with prayer bottles and told the saints to hold on to these prayer cloths. Keep them in your possession because we're going to need to be covered under the blood of Jesus Christ, just a symbol of our faith in the power of God's word. So stay tuned for daily updates. Please feel free to visit us on the ZionCathedral.org website. I love the family of Zion. I love the Eastern New York third jurisdiction, my King's Chapel family, the entire body of Christ. We appreciate you. This is your friend and your brother, Bishop Frank Anfon White, reminding you again that we have the promise of divine protection. Stay under the blood. God bless you.